Welcome to Comics on a Pyre, a channel to have a meaningful conversation over movies, life, books, and shows, and maybe just a spot to spend time BSing over comics. If you like your entertainment with a bit of substance, then you, my vagabond friend, have come to the right tavern. Tether your horse by the post and come right on in and warm yourself by the fire. Tap that subscribe button and for the next few minutes, my fellow George Carlin reprobate, lend me your ear. Freedom Force was the brainchild of two Marvel comic book juggernauts in the industry. First one being the legendary Chris Claremont. That's right, the X-Men writer who gave us such iconic stories as Days of Future Past, The Dark Phoenix Saga, and God Loves, Man Kills, just to name a few. He is the man responsible for laying the groundwork blueprint of what we know as the X-Men today. The other co-creator of Freedom Force being John Salvatore Romita Jr. His artwork, as most comic book lovers know, is simply amazing. It can be seen across the comic universe, from the pages of Invincible Iron Man, The Uncanny X-Men, and the panels that I personally love the most, The Amazing Spider-Man. Freedom Force made its iconic debut in November of 1985 within the pages of The Uncanny X-Men Volume 1, being issue number 199. The roster consisted of Raven Darkholm, aka Mystique. She is the leader of the group. Her mutant powers is a, of a shapeshifter. With a blink of an eye, she can change her vicious to shoot any circumstance being who she needs to be to escape immediate danger. Her true features seem to be of a red-haired, yellow-eyed, and blue-skinned woman. She's actually the mother of one of the X-Men. By looking at her appearance, I'll let you guess which one, though. The next is Dominicus Petrakis, a.k.a. Avalanche. He is a mutant with superhuman ability to generate powerful waves of vibrations from his hands, creating highly destructible effects through the air, water, and ground. Their vibration could cause small organic objects to shatter or crumble into dust. When used upon the earth itself or against large inorganic objects such as buildings, these generated vibrations can cause disastrous earthquake-like effects, hence given to its code name. Next, here is Frederick J. Dukes, aka The Blob. This obese mutant has been a thorn in the X-Men side since before the Uncanny X-Men were even formed, debuting way back in issue number three in 1964. Talk about someone you can't get rid of. His powers all have to do with his body. By sheer will, he can increase the mass exponentially, making him even larger if he wishes. His strength is above normal, and his skin is knee impenetrable to most attacks. When he wants, Frederick can increase his weight substantially, making him movable from the ground from which he stands on. Hence the phrase, nothing can move the blob. Next, we have on the roster, Irene Adler, aka Destiny. She is a precog. She possesses the psionic power of precognition. In other words, the ability to perceive in her mind's eye the outcome of possible future events. Although being blind, Destiny can mentally scan the probability spectrum of alternative futures and mentally perceive the sounds and sights of events and distinguish them from each other. By concentrating, she can focus on the most probable future outcome. The accuracy of Destiny's ability to foresee the future events is decreased in direct proportion of the number of alternative futures that she scans. She could comfortably scan the alternative futures that existed from one second away up until at least 15 minutes away. In other words, the more imminent the event, the more accurate her predictions will be. She shares a rather close relationship with Mystique, the leader of the group, one that seems to be much more intimate than with the rest of the team. Next, we have St. John Allardyce, a.k.a. Pyro. As the name suggests, this mutant can manipulate flames to do just about whatever he wants, increasing or decreasing their size, making them morph into creatures or even snuffing them out at his whim. 
The interesting thing, though, is that he is unable to create these flames himself out of thin air. He needs flames from a fire that has already started, from a source other than himself. Hence, him always carrying around flamethrowers to get them started. Pyro is bosom buddies with the Blob. Those two even fought Daredevil together on one of their own lone outings. If you want, pick up issue 269 of Daredevil for an entertaining read. Now, the last member at the formation of Freedom Force is Reader Wayward, aka Spiral. Now, I saved her for last because she is new to the group. As far as I know, she has never been a part of the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants, Magneto Squad. She has a long backstory with the X-Men known as Longshot and is from Mojo World, an extra dimensional and extra temporal realm inhabited by semi-humanoids. But that is a rabbit hole that I won't be getting into here. Maybe for another story. Anywho, I like the character of Spiral for she is quite different than most other Marvel characters. How so, I hear your accent. Well, to start out with, she has six hands and has powerful mystical abilities. With gestures or dance moves, she can teleport herself and numerous other people across great distances. Some of Spyro's spell casting powers can be triggered just through small, simple gestures of her hands. Now, this character definitely deserves a deeper video. I distinctly remember her from the X-Men Children of the Atom arcade game. She's totally badass. Now, if the majority of this group roster looks familiar, that is because it is. The only character missing from it is his once leader, the master of magnetism himself, Magneto. You see, Freedom Force used to be the brotherhood of evil mutants. But at this time in the Marvel Universe, the group and Eric Lencher have gone estranged from one another. And so Mystique, seeing the writing on the wall, wants to preserve hers and her teammates' life and precious, coveted freedom. To do so, Raven seeks out a woman by the name of Dr. Valerie Cooper. Now, pay attention. This lady is very important, as she has not only played a pivotal role in Freedom Force's career, but in that mutant group known as X-Factor as well, playing the role as liaison between the United States government and mutant kind. You see, Dr. Valerie Cooper holds the title of Special Assistant to the President's National Security Advisor. Knowing of her high-ranking position, Mystique approaches her and offers her a proposition. Offering the Brotherhood's service to work as a government operative in exchange for immunity against all past crimes that the team has committed under the helm of Magneto. If she accepts, they would now be known as Freedom Force. It would answer only to her. Val, of course, accepts the offer under one condition. That the group go on a probational trial mission to seek out and capture their former leader, Magneto. Now, that's cold-blooded. Freedom Force will go on to menace other supergroups as well, such as X-Factor, New Mutants, and even the Avengers. But if you want a hilarious encounter, read Incredible Hulk, issue number 369, where the team fights the Greyhawk. It was written by Peter David and would have you laughing all the way through. Throughout later years, the team's ranks will swell and sadly shrink because of a few deaths. Crimson Commando, Stonewall, and Cyber Saber join Freedom Force and Uncanny X-Men, issue number 223. But Destiny and Stonewall die in Uncanny X-Men number 255. But this is not the end of the group. They will continue on. But for the sake of this video, I'm stopping here, chronicling their adventures into the late 80s. If you liked this video, then what are you waiting for? Go pick up some issues concerning this group and read up. Their adventures serve for an interesting read. In the meanwhile though, wander over to my YouTube channel, Comics on a Pyre, for other videos like this one. While there, don't forget to subscribe, click the like button, and tap on that bell icon to be notified when the next video drops. Till then though, keep reading my friends.